Hi everyone, my name is Belinda Shi. Welcome to another episode of my photography tips. Today I'd like to share with you some very simple tips on how to be efficient uh, to develop your, uh, create and edit your pictures uh, in Adobe Lightroom 5. And there are some keyboard shortcuts I wanted to share with you and there are some simple tips on keeping your workspace clean and in order to achieve efficiency. So if you watch some of my other video tutorials, I'm all about efficiency, all about productivity. I wanted to um, uh, edit my photos um, and maximize its quality using the minimum amount of time. For example, in this episode, I'm going to share with you how I edit this picture uh, from this uh, camera setting to this just uh, within a matter of a few clicks or a few seconds. Uh, number one, you number one first step you need to do is to make sure that you are in the develop module. Click on develop in the menu bar. Uh, a keyboard shortcut very useful is D as a dog. Um, I like personally like to use uh, keyboard shortcut a lot, um, but uh, if you don't remember this, um, it's completely fine. Um, now, another thing, a uh, very quick tip I wanted to show you is um, now, after you enter the develop module, uh, one thing I typically like to do um, is actually right click here, make sure you select the solo mode here. And same thing if you right click on the right hand side of the panel, click on solo mode to select it. The solo mode makes sure that your workspace is very clean, only one edit panel is allowed to be opened. Um, that's the solo mode. Okay, for example, if I have my collection edit mode, uh, a collection uh, panel opens, uh, and if I switch to presets, um, the collection will be automatically closed. So one panel, only one panel will be allowed to open in a solo mode. Same thing here on the right hand side. If you have the basic open and if you switch to, for example, detail and the basic will be closed. By the way, if you use my presets, uh, Magic Light workflow preset, there's absolutely no need for you to open any right hand side of the panel, edit panel, but the only reason I keep the right panel open is to check the histogram. Histogram is um, the important uh, chart I check no matter during the photo shooting stage or uh, in the editing stage. Okay, uh, make sure now you enter uh, preset. Well, make sure I enter preset and I enter my Magic Light workflow presets. Uh, and I want to reset this image. This is a raw file, by the way. If I click on I on my keyboard, again, I like to use keyboard shortcut a lot. Uh, I on my keyboard shortcut, uh, you will see the I means information, I guess. You will see uh, my camera settings for this image. CR uh, extension means this is camera raw, this is the raw file, and this image is not retouched. Um, and this is the 140 of uh, 400 a second is my shutter speed f16 is my aperture ISO 800 it was a pretty gloomy day a cloudy day that's why I increased the ISO uh, to 800 um, again in, uh, let me click on I on my keyboard to hide this information now the first chart I need to look at is the histogram um, if I see most of the curve rests in the left side of the histogram, that means the image might be underexposed. If the most uh, the majority of the curve rests in the right hand side of your histogram, that means your image might be overexposed. Um, this image is pretty well over, uh, exposed, but it might be still a little underexposed because we can see that the the, there's some space on the right hand side. That's why in my um, uh, edit uh, process, in my first um, step in my workflow, I click on light or light more to increase the exposure. And uh, typically I'm not too worried about my image um, is overexposed in the step one 
exposure adjustment because my step three and four will darken the image um, very quickly. Step three, darken sky, darken sky beach day, or darken sky more. Immediately you see that the sky's overexposed part is uh, completely eliminated. Um, by the way, I have a very uh, detailed video tutorial on my website that actually is on my product page. Um, the video tutorial shows you how to uh, turn on the clipping indicators uh, to show your histogram and uh, whether the uh, what the red color and blue color on your image uh, means. Um, but very quickly, red shows overexposed part of your image, and blue means the sh you know the under. Uh, exposed part of the image. Uh, again, goes back to my uh, editing process. Um, as I mentioned, in step three and four, typically the image will be darkened. My step four is adding the vignette effect. You can see the four edges of my image are um, immediately darkened. So um, this image, uh, again, I actually skipped a step two. I, as I mentioned in my uh, video tutorial for my presets, my presets uh, workflow is completely sequence independent. I can skip, I can go from step one to step three and four and go back to step two. Uh, it doesn't really matter which step you go first and they're all, uh, as I mentioned, sequence independent, and they stack on top of each other. All right, so my step two um, is to increase my sharpness and clarity, and uh, I like Chris Moore for this image. All right, I wanted to show you that this image, just after a few clicks, um, it goes from this to this. All right, and uh, let me... Uh, share with you what I'm going to do with my step five and many chances I completely skip step five because uh, it's changing the color tones of the image and uh, in my particularly for my landscape editing I wanted to keep my image uh, true to the original color and I don't necessarily have to be I have to change the color tones but sometimes I want it to be uh, more creative. So now in the step five, um, I for this image, I will probably use pop the green because this image actually let me restore the color to see, to show you more clearly by clicking on pop the green. Immediately you see the green color of this image is enhanced. So uh, I don't use pop the green a lot for um, most of my landscape photos because uh, either I photograph uh, sunset, sunrise, and there's a lot of the orange colors to be popped, or there I photograph mountains, lakes. So anyway, um, pop the green is very appropriate for this image because um, the, the majority part of this image is green, and I wanted to enhance that. And to, especially after this adjustment, the leaves, the grass, uh, or the bushes, whatever you call it, uh, look uh, more fresh. All right, um, now let me just show you one more time how I edit this picture within a matter of a few seconds or a few clicks. Uh, like more in the first step, crisp more and darken the sky more, darken the edge and pop the green. So this is how I edit my photos and I hope this video tutorial is helpful to you. And uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts I uh, introduced to you include D as a dog to enter the develop module and uh, to keep the workspace clean to be more efficient you select the solo mode both on the right hand side and the left hand side and sometimes you can click on F8 actually to completely hide your right uh, editing panel because you don't need it. Well, of course, I wanted to show my histogram. That's why I keep the right hand side panel and I just click on F8 one more time to keep uh, to hide or show the right panel. And uh, if I wanted to show you the information, I click on I short uh, keyboard shortcut. All right, so uh, this is a very quick video tutorial to show you how I edit my images and how I keep my workspace clean to be more efficient. Hope uh, these tips are helpful to you and I will see you very soon.